No amount of technology is going to replace the need for you to know your profession. I'm lucky enough to, to be the recipient of some fire prevention and safety grants through the Assistance to Firefighter Grant Program. I also get exposed to a lot of other submissions from a lot of universities and a lot of really smart um, groups of people that, that put in for these grants and get to review them. And everybody thinks that they can develop the next widget that's going to protect firefighters and keep you from getting hurt or killed. And their hearts are in the right place. They want to help. But if I see one more person put in for a flashover predictor that's some sort of hockey puck that you're going to whip out of your pocket, throw in the room in front of you, and all of a sudden it's going to sound an alarm when you're about to die, we don't understand the fire environment. When things can go from 100 degrees to 1,000 degrees in 10 seconds, if you think there's some sort of heat flux or some sort of temperature measurement or something like that that's going to happen, that's going to give you enough warning to get out of where you are, you can't do it. The time isn't there. The window isn't there for warning. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to stop trying to fix it with technology and start fixing it with education. Because if you know what's going on around you, and how many people say, if you put the fire out, you don't have to jump out the window, how much time do we spend learning how to jump out of windows, and we don't learn how to not have to jump out the window? It's all important stuff, but we need to balance all of this. You can see, turnout gear, SCBA, apparatus. I mean, we're solving some really important problems here with technology. Story this morning from Ronnie Coleman, as we were standing in the back before the, uh, before the beginning session, and he shared a story with me which I thought was phenomenal. When the fire service went from horse-drawn pumpers to steam pumpers, 100,000 volunteers quit because they thought they were ruining the fire service. Shocking. Shocking. We've been fighting technology for a long time. But we need to start countering some of that with some education. We've got thermal imaging cameras. We can see through smoke. We're solving important problems. Most people don't understand the limitations of thermal imaging cameras. We'll talk about some of them, but real quick, they're talking about removing the temperature readout from thermal imaging cameras because fire departments are misusing that across the board. If you're taking a wall temperature to tell you what the safety of that room is, and the wall temperature is 100 degrees, you could have a gas temperature of 1,000 degrees over your head, but you're going to be looking at 100 degrees on the IR camera. Oh, we're good, 100 degrees, let's keep moving. Because we don't understand what that temperature really is. We need to get through doors faster. All right, we made hydraulic tools that allow us to do that. We need to spray water better. All right, we created a thousand different nozzles to be able to do that. We need to make the fire bigger. So we created fans that blow like 30,000 CFM worth of air into the building. And I make that joke because it's funny. However, that's an extremely useful and powerful tool if you have the education and you understand when and how to use it. And we've got a study right now where we're going to be doing some burns to, to really look at that and really figure it out at the end of this year. But geez, these things have been around for 25 or more years, and we still don't understand them. I can't tell you, it's probably the number one question. What about PPA? Christ, it's been around for 25 years. I think this is why the research is so important, so we can start comparing apples to apples as opposed to anecdotes that we're not quite sure exactly what happened, but we see the outcome on YouTube, and if it's not favorable, then we rip the thing off the apparatus and throw it in the equipment locker, never to be seen again. Because clearly it was the fan's fault. It wanted to do bad things. Not how it was used. How often do we do that? Mm.